So this is another part in my series called Bite Size Base Hacks. And this one in particular is called the Crossover Hack. Now, the Crossover Hack is something that I'm kind of concerned about putting out there because it really makes a difference in terms of which subwoofers you're using and whether they're deep bass subwoofers or not, or more to the point, whether they're a flat response curve subwoofer. Uh, now the thing is, if now some people are, are aware, others aren't. Uh, I'm the first ever SVS affiliate, uh, and so you know if you follow my links in the description below, it can really help out this channel. Uh, one of the things that are important to understand about the SVS subs is that they have a very very flat frequency response. Uh, I've seen it referred to a lot in the industry as ruler flat, so an extremely flat response. Now what that means is for this particular hack is that you can run the crossover pretty much as high as you want it without it sounding boomy. Now to me boominess is what happens when your upper bass is just way too overdone. It's too loud and it just sounds boomy, right? Well the thing is when it comes to SVS subs you can run the crossover a lot higher. And what a lot of people don't understand is that your crossover, see I've got these, uh, these are the uh, SVS Ultra Towers here and these are rated to go down to 28 hertz, okay? They're not lightweights. They do really well when it comes to bass. So why in the heck would I cross those over at 80 hertz like I do or 90 hertz or something like that? Well, the thing is when you do the small setting and you do a crossover at say 80 hertz, it's not a hard cutoff to your main speakers. Those still get signal all the way down to 20 hertz or as low as they'll produce, okay? They still get that signal. It's just filtered off at a 12 dB filter. So it's, it's a soft cutoff. It's not a hard cutoff. The thing is, is it's a genuinely a, a hard cutoff for the subwoofers. So whatever you set your frequency at, you're basically setting, you know, the, the speed limit for the subwoofer at that point. So anything above that, your subwoofer is just not going to get anything. Okay, so the whole idea is you run your crossovers a little bit higher uh, and then you get more bass in that, you know, mid bass region. So here's where a lot of people make mistakes. They'll say, okay, well these speakers, they go down to 28 hertz, so I might as well cross it over at 40, which isn't bad or wrong. However, if you've got a basic subwoofer that only produces output down to just under 40 hertz, you're, you're putting a very, very small window on your actual bass that you're getting. Now, if you run that crossover higher, say 80 hertz, 90 hertz, your, your towers are still getting bass, Okay, just not as much. But now your subwoofers are getting bass and they're getting bass in that region. So instead of being completely silent above, let's say you cross it over at 40 hertz, instead of your subwoofers being completely silent above 40 hertz, uh, it's now got signal there, which also makes it easier to integrate the subs. If you've got the, your subwoofers crossed over at 40 hertz and you're trying to integrate them using music and things like that, it's going to be a nightmare. I'll tell you that right now. So that's another tip is if you want to run a lower crossover, that's fine, but I would still run it as high as 80 or 90 hertz to get the subwoofer level correct. Uh, you can check out my video on adjusting subwoofers by ear. and. By doing that, you'll at least have some point of reference in the higher frequency range where most music is, and so you'll be able to get it more integrated a little bit easier. Uh, if you try and integrate a subwoofer at 40 hertz crossover, it's just going to be a nightmare. Uh, I've, I've done it. I wanted to pull my hair out. It's terrible. Um, but the thing is, uh, with the way these subwoofers are, with their flat response, um, and, and, and believe me, that's not common. If you're into subwoofers and you think a subwoofer is a subwoofer, they're really not. You can check out the list of subwoofers. I've got graphs on there so you can see what I'm talking about. It really does make a difference. But with, uh, with SVS subs, I can run the crossover seriously as high as 250 hertz. No big deal. Uh, I don't feel, I don't get any boominess or anything out of it. It's just slightly different. It's not a drastic difference like it might be with other subwoofers. But you know the important thing is is uh, you you want to at least get 80 hertz. Uh, when I ran the prime, prime towers, I ran those at 90 hertz. When I ran the ultra bookshelves, I ran those at 100 hertz. I run these at 80 hertz. 
You know, even though these will go down to 28, I still run them up to 80 hertz. Uh, it still it gives me great dynamics at that point. I can hear the subwoofer where a, a lot of, uh, let's put it this way, a lot of business in the subwoofer gets done between 30 and 80 hertz. Uh, a lot of your, your, your music and things like that. Uh, then you get into really fun stuff under 30 hertz and that's just an amazing experience that most people have never heard in a home system because most subwoofers never do much under 30 hertz, even if they're rated for that. Uh, but the whole idea behind this video is that you run your crossover a little bit higher if you can. If you're running basic subs that are peaky and loud uh, at the higher frequencies and quiet at the softer frequencies, it's a nightmare. I've done it. It's like, again, so this is my, my hesitation on doing this video. It's frustrating. Um, I was really frustrated doing that, uh, trying to run typical subwoofers, trying to get them set up the way I know how. I wanted to pull my hair out. It was just terrible. Um, but the other benefit of running a higher crossover is that it takes the load off your amplifier, off your AVR. And so it's almost like getting a higher output amplifier because bass is what requires the power. That's what requires wattage. Bass eats up the wattage. So if you raise your crossover, you're reducing the amount of bass your amplifier or your AVR has to produce. And so the headroom of that amplifier goes up. So you can turn it up higher without stressing it. So it's kind of like getting a more expensive amplifier by doing a higher crossover. You're getting more power available to you before it starts clipping. So that's the idea behind the crossover hack, is that by running a higher crossover, you're, you're sending those low frequency duties over to the subwoofers and taking the load off your amplifier should make it run a little bit cooler, it should sound a little bit better, and all of that. Again, the trick is if you're using basic subwoofers, you can run into an issue with that. Uh, but that's essentially, this was a longer bass hack than usual, uh, but that's the crossover bass hack. Um, you know, if you want to run your, your crossover at 40 hertz, that's fine. Uh, just know that you, you have to have a deep sub to do that and do it well. Uh, if you run a basic sub at 40 hertz because that's what your towers are set for, um, you're probably not going to get anything out of your subwoofer because it starts giving out. I'm, I'm, I'm making a blanket statement here. Most subwoofers out there, once you get under 40 hertz, they start giving up and usually somewhere between 30 and 40, they just start getting much quieter. So if you do your crossover at 40 hertz because your tower is really good, then your, your subwoofer is doing nothing except for certain times where it'll go nuts and it's just a nightmare. So that's my caveat on this whole hack is that it's, it's complicated. But uh, I just want to do this because a lot of people have questions on it and I've done statements on it before where you want to run your crossover higher but then I went and set up a friend's system and he has a basic sub and it was just a nightmare to integrate. So, and again, you can also adjust the amount of bass your sub gets by changing uh, the crossover and things like that and it can get more complicated. But again, I'm trying to make a short video and it, it isn't working on this one. Uh, anyway, uh, check out the other series on bite-sized bass hacks. Uh, I'm doing a whole playlist on this. I'm just doing them small to where they're focusing on each individual thing I do and why I do them, but quick and to the point. So hopefully that helps. Uh, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you watching and please subscribe.